welcome back to the David67 um, Celtic News YouTube channel. Uh, today, Sunday, the 10th of September. A uh, couple of things to reflect on today and a couple of things to speculate about in the next few days. Um, before we get going, please uh, like and subscribe. Um, slowly inching towards target number two of 100 subscribers would be wonderful to get there by uh, our next um, game at the weekend against Dundee. Remember also there is a fun trivia question in the community section which is proving quite popular with the viewers and subscribers. So to start with uh, rather disappointing news uh, for those who may not be aware, the women's team got incredibly close to moving on to the next stage of Champions League uh, qualifiers. They, in the end, lost 11-10 on penalties in the game against Valerenga in Oslo last night. Um, they went one nothing down after uh, five minutes, but equalised almost straight away through Kit Lefersky. Um, Valerenga were for the most part on top for the rest of the first half into the second half and um, Kelsey Doherty made several very good saves however in the second half Celtic got more and more into the game uh, Tyree Burchill who came on for the injured Amy Gallagher scored but the goal was disallowed Celtic also had a uh, Shot by Chloe Craig, uh, cleared off the line. Some people thought the ball had actually gone in. However, um, there was no uh, technology to confirm whether this was the case or not, and the goal wasn't given. And um, the game then went into extra time. Jenny Smith scored with a couple of minutes to go. Um, and Celtic looked like they were going to go through 2-1. However, a couple of minutes into added time at the end of extra time, Valerenga uh, broke into the box and Caitlin Hayes was a judge to have pulled down the Norwegian player and a penalty was given, which was converted by uh, their experienced uh, striker Thorsness. The game went to um, penalties and... Rather remarkably, there were 21 penalties in a row successfully scored. Nobody missed until rather unfortunately, poor Kelsey Doherty, the goalkeeper, stepped up to take penalty number 22 and her opposite number, Guro Peterson, saved the penalty. And so Celtic went out of the competition. However, I think this is a very good experience for the women's team. I, having had a look at the um, likely threat in the Scottish Women's Premier League from Rangers and Glasgow City women, um, would expect that this Celtic side are um, likely to be in the top two again. And I um, personally feel that they are uh, currently the favourites to win the, the women's uh, Scottish League, although this will be um, more clear after they play Glasgow for the first time at the start of October and then later playing against Rangers. The women's next match is uh, during the midweek against Hearts and hopefully the few players such as Gallagher and Lefersky who have been off with injuries will be back um, fully fit for Wednesday's game against Hearts. Hearts can be quite a difficult opponent who often give Celtic Rangers and Glasgow City um, a hard game. Um, but I would expect now that Celtic have a good strength and depth that um, they will win quite easily next Wednesday. Also, my heart and sympathy goes out to Kelsey Doherty. She was definitely one of Celtic's best players yesterday. Made a lot of very good crucial saves, keeping Celtic in the match. 
and it is such a shame that such an important um, match is decided by a goalkeeper missing uh, a penalty. Um, and my thoughts always at these times go back to the Man United goalkeeper who missed uh, the twenty-second penalty in the champion in the Europa League final against Villarreal, and also poor Anton Rogan who missed in the nineteen ninety Scottish Cup final against Aberdeen, um, where he uh, missed uh, his penalty and Aberdeen then scored to win 9-8 on penalties. Um, there were certainly a lot of stories at the time that it took Anton Rogan quite a number of months to recover from the uh, emotional upset of missing that penalty. And it, it was said to have affected him for a great length of time. It was actually very encouraging to see Caitlin Hayes immediately going up to console Kelsey Doherty as um, no one can blame a goalkeeper for missing a penalty kick. Moving on, um, there were a couple of our players in potential international duty yesterday. However, both Dyson Maida and Kyogo stayed on the bench as Japan beat Germany 4-1 in a friendly match. Um, but... Um, Japan have a second friendly match on Tuesday against Turkey and I would fully expect that Kyogo and Dyson Maida will be given their chance um, to play that day. Um, as you will be aware, Kyogo did not go to the World Cup at the end of 22 with Japan. Uh, only uh, Dyson Maida went from Celtic to play for Japan in that competition. However, Kyogo has got back into the Japan squad, uh, scoring a goal against Panama in June and then played again in uh, the match against Peru. And so hopefully has got himself back into the uh, Japan manager's um, thoughts. Um, as for a fairly long spell, um, the Japan manager appeared to be ignoring Kyogo despite his great successes in Scotland. Um, I think um, both Kyogo and Maida will play on Tuesday for Japan and surely will um, be very successful. Um, over the next couple of days, we should see um, uh, our under 21 players. Uh, currently away with Scotland, McPherson and Summers and Anderson um, all getting into action against Spain and also a couple of our ex-players who moved off, Morrison and Doak. Um, and I suspect that uh, all of them or most of them will start against Spain on Monday's game. Um, also would expect Callum McGregor to be involved in the friendly against England on Tuesday. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, none of our players were uh, on international duty yesterday. Um, Luis Palma will have a further CONCACAF Nations League game against Grenada on Wednesday. Um, after which he'll come back to Celtic. Only other wee piece of Celtic news is the Jotis um, story rumbles on in Al at Al Ittihad in Saudi Arabia. There were stories that a couple of the other Saudi teams were looking to loan him. Um, including the team managed by Stephen Gerrard, but that fell through. However, it would appear Ferner Bacci in Turkey are looking to loan Jota. The Turkish transfer window stays open until the 15th of September, and so a loan from Saudi Arabia to Turkey would still be allowed. 
um, and Fenerbahce actually were one of the other teams said to be uh, very interested in Jota's signature um, when the issues over the number of foreign players at Al Etihad started to become uh, newsworthy. Interestingly, if he was loaned to Fernabachi, he then would be potentially in um, likelihood of challenging or taking the place of the ex-Rangers player Ryan Kent, who of course signed for them during the summer after being uh, released or choosing to leave Rangers. So just about brings us to the end of um, today's video. Please like and subscribe. Please have a wee go at the quiz question, which I'm just about to put into the community section. We'll chat again tomorrow um, with regards to any uh, news uh, coming up in the next 24 hours and also start to look to the uh, next women's match on Wednesday against Hearts and the next league fixture Celtic have which is against Dundee. So uh, thanks for listening, thanks for watching and for now goodbye and hail hail.